the race thing, I didn't un clearly understand it. And I got my first real message. I was in the Air Force for two years, two months, 14 days, and a few hours. And I didn't go to Korea. I went to French, Mo French Morocco, City Soleil, out in the desert. A secret, a secret radar site. So secret that the Arabs walked their camels all over the site. They knew exactly where a secret <laughs> radar site. Okay. And the big things out in the desert, the, the big right. secret. Okay, so there we were. While I was there, we lived in Quonset huts. And we, the military hired Arabs to clean our huts. And all of the male Arabs were called Muhammad. We didn't even bother to ask their names. They were all Muhammad this, Muhammad that. Our Muhammad would clean our, 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 our hut and our beds, and we would come in and we would mess them up and say, Muhammad, you didn't do a good job, and we'd mess the beds up again. It was almost a, repre a replay of my, 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 my gay bashing things. I was part of that, and Muhammad, Muhammad, and I, once again, George Trudeau for him, I was the last one to help him clean his stuff up. Muhammad says, George, well, you, you don't have to do this to, you, to me. You shouldn't do this to me. And he said, you, me, same, same. He was right before Muhammad came to our hut. I was the only little black kid. I was the object of ridicule, and I was the one poking fun at folks. He, you, me, same, same. I was a minority, he was a minority. I didn't quite get that message until years later, but it was planted there. Wow. All the while, there was a voice within me saying, if you teach the little ones the lessons that you learn and pray that they not have to learn them the way that you did, they would be better people. God didn't give me many gifts. I'm a lousy electrician. I don't do the grass well. In fact, Barbara will not let me mess with the grass. Uh, I don't cook, I, but I, I'm, I'm an excellent. I clean toilets and I, I do the dishes well. I put them in the dishwasher, of course. <laughs> but my creator gave me the gift of teaching. And the very first class that I taught as an adjunct instructor I fell in love with this thing called teaching. I gave the lecture much too fast, but the excitement that was in me meant that I was doing something that I thoroughly enjoyed and I could do it well. I'm a teacher. And I write about things that I have been guilty of doing. People can change, they don't always change. But I teach so that others, using myself as a foil or as an example, perhaps can understand that if that old man could do it back in those days, why can't we do it in these days? I have seen courage at multiracial, multicultural degrees and I had to come to this place called Norman to really appreciate it. The first civil rights movement in a college or university in Oklahoma was right here at the University of Oklahoma, the Afro-American Student Union. And I, along with Melvin B. Tolson, the first African-American professor, and Lenny Marie, Marie Tolliver II, were the advisors for those students. And they challenged racism. And I had an opportunity to, to, to be their, their, their mentor and advisor. But one of the most gratifying things that I had an opportunity to do was Ben Hart, who was an outstanding football player, invited me to a meeting of the ath black athletes. And they were going to protest race, racism within the athletic department. And there I mediated and was an advisor to them and they did protest racism. And if the athletes could do it, I thought, as much as these, this, the people in Oklahoma love, especially the football players, then somehow the others will find a reason to, to relax so they can keep those players. I was, I, that was, those thoughts were going through my mind way back in those days. Mm -hmm. And it worked. It worked. Challenging such things as 
the, ba- the, the athletes couldn't have mustaches and, and, and beards, which was a part of like, one's manhood. It had nothing to do with whether you tackle or, score or, or put a ball in, in the rim. It had everything to do with appearance. Sure, they walked with a swag and they had their own language, but when they were on the field, they were all serious. But there were things that they couldn't do. They couldn't have a, a roommate with a person of a different race until these athletes protested. There were no coaches, assistant or otherwise. There were no, no one in the athletic department who was of color. And the young athlete says, we're tired of being just performers for white people. We're either going to be a part of this community or we're going to stop performing in this community. They got the message. Point guard, for example. Good grace in the basketball team. That's a thinking position. For uh, Up until the time the athletes protested, the thought was that you can't give the, 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 the black guy the ball and let him decide who to pass the ball to. And where. Quarterback. Good gracious. When Oklahoma, especially in football, decided they were going to do the wishbone, and black football players, because they had to do everything in their segregated schools, did that wishbone better than any of the white players until we got some later. And we had some white was really good. And it pointed out that if a person has talent, it doesn't matter what color they are. But the lesson for George Henderson was this. If the oppressor is white or black, it doesn't matter. He or she is still an oppressor. So let's not make race the reason for doing this. Let's just make, be honest about it. Life lessons, things that I learned. But what I learned that I value most was I learned how to reach a generation and next generation and the next generation of students and build something called a family in my classrooms. I exist outside the classroom. I'm alive in it. Because there, every single person has a voice and has an opinion. And we have some heated discussions in my classrooms, and we talk about them. And when we leave, we've reached some resolution. Early on, I realized that I was doing the right thing because the white students also wanted an opportunity to prove how committed and dedicated they were. The first black history course taught to Norman High students in summer was by white students in my class. God, you know, they knew more, they knew more black history than any black kid on this campus because they did their homework and they taught it to Norman High students. The first group of students who went to tutor, my human relations students, we went to Oklahoma City and tutored low-income, low-achieving students of all racial groups. God, they did so many things. And while they were doing these things, race had nothing to do with their ability to perform, and we learned those lessons because we lived those lessons. I started then being honest with my students, and I started telling them, I love you. Not in a predatory way, but in an honest way. And they understood. Yeah, they understood. Yeah.